So good evening, welcome to the first Great Presenters Program of our 2023 season. Tonight, we're excited to have Steve Robb here to talk to us about his song creating process. Steve's been part of the Metro West music scene since 2021, no, I think yeah, earlier. That's 2001. 2001, that's a type <laughs> that's of story. Like 2001, I thought so. He was a founding member of the band's Midlife Crisis, Working Still and Cabin Fever. He started the infamous open mic at the Dudley Chateau and has hosted open mics at Sandy Burr and the Music Exchange Listening Room at the W Gallery. Steve instigated the Whaling City Limits benefit concerts. And in 2021, I think, he released his original self-produced full-length album, Cabin Fever. Steve also hosts a podcast called Stomp Song Creating, which is available on most streaming platforms. Thank you so much to Steve for being here tonight. A couple of the regular housekeeping notes. I'm recording this session for possible broadcast on Wakeham and for uh, the library's YouTube page, so you'll be able to rewatch and share. Um, and Steve is open to questions at any point, so raise your hand. If you're joining us via Zoom, just type your question in the chat and I will raise my hand for you. So now I'll get out of the way and hand it over. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I don't know if you're all going to be able to see the screen from here. If you want to. Okay. I, I started with this one. I, we're going to talk um, about a lot of things, um, but primarily focus on four songs and what went into those. This is a fifth song, and I... I I put this up here only because it's the song about songwriting that I wrote. Um, that um, I and I give you some idea of what goes on. I sat there with my guitar playing, playing a little lick, and um, um, that that we tend to do as we're just uh, just noodling around. And um, it was just uh, this. And that was really primarily it. And I, uh, I opened up my book. Um, I have my little song book over here. And I, I started, I, I said, well, maybe I can start writing something. So I've got, I've got this book that a lot of us have, which just kind of just scribbles and things. It's different than working on a, uh, on a computer. Um, you get to see, you, don't, you, you can't delete and never lose it. So you've always got it here. And I looked at this and I said, well, here I am with this blank page in front of me. So this all started, and it, and it really just kind of came from that. And um, so this song ended up becoming about um, about the latent latency. There are things that exist on the paper that you you have to draw out, just like in photography. You've got to bring out that um, uh, that, that image tape needs developing, so it it doesn't it doesn't just appear. Um, and uh, so. This is, this is, you can, I'll, I'll reference my, my first uh, uh, album called Cabin Fever. You can get it on Spotify. Uh, you can listen to it anytime. We were just listening to it here. So if you want to hear anything from that, um, you can just easily, easily listen to that if you have Spotify. Um, let's see. So um, what I wanted to mention was, um, this isn't really, this is not a lesson in songwriting at all. Uh, that would take way too much time. Um, but it's really just kind of a reveal into what what this songwriter does. Other songwriters do different things, but uh, through my podcast, I've talked to a lot of songwriters, and I find that there's actually um, a fair amount of consistency um, with what we do. Now, and the songwriters that I'm talking about are primarily ones like me who write lyrics, who write chords, who aren't um, you know writing instrumental jazz, uh, you know. Uh, fusion or anything like that. So that's primarily what we're focusing on is, is you can call it folk, you can call it acoustic pop, you can call it anything like that. Um, um, but what what songwriters tend to be, what I've, what I've learned is that we really are, and I, I'm totally guilty of this, we are really, we're empaths. We, we, um, we really feel what other people are feeling. Um, we're lovers and we're haters and we're observers and we're translators, and um, we're sometimes historians or more communicators. But really, what we are, you won't find a stoic songwriter out there because you really have to, you have to, you have to feel, you have to, you have to bring it in, and you have to put it out. So you you have to um, uh, be comfortable with your vulnerabilities too. So what makes up a song? Anybody? What can? Okay, I know you're nervous. Um, primarily, what makes up a song is music. 
and words and those two things. And, and we kind of call it lyrics when we're talking about, um, about songs. Um, but what also makes up a song is, is uh, mood and, um, and uh, message. And a lot of times what they call a hook. And a hook is a really undefined thing that um, people tend to uh, try to put into their songs. I don't know if I have hooks in mind, maybe some of them do, but it's something that kind of grabs you. It's a, it's a little change sometimes that happens. And I, I, I could probably give a couple examples of that. Um, and then you've got the compositional parts of the song. You've generally got the intro, you've got, uh, you know, conventionally, you've got the intro, you've got a couple of verses, you've got a chorus. You may have another verse and then you have something called a bridge and uh, and a bridge is something different from the verse different from the chorus and uh it's it's almost more an interlude than it is a bridge but it it, uh, it just changes it gives you a third dimension of the song um just to just to add some variety to it uh make it a little bit more um make, just just keep uh, keep the listener uh tuned into it um let's see so what kinds of songs are there out there? And if I have a thought, what do we got? We got love songs, right? Love songs. We have hate songs, maybe, <laughs> maybe a couple. Um, we've got story songs, and those you could also call ballads. Um, I kind of like, I think there's a difference. I think I like story songs, and um, uh, they really tell, you know, it's start to finish. Uh, ballads are still working with that. Um, we've got emotive songs, we've got happy songs, optimistic songs, we've got prost protest songs. Songs of social commentary. Um, we've got blues, you know, which is uh, you know, sad songs. That, uh, not always, but um, they, they tend to be. So um, again, feel free to raise your hand. What um, what starts this whole process? Well, this is this is what it, what it's all about. What starts this whole process? And um, there are uh, songwriters out there who. Um, in fact, it, it tends to be the question um, I ask the most on the podcast and people now who I'm interviewing say, I know you're gonna ask this, so I'm gonna tell you. I start with the music first. So what does that mean? As, as opposed to the lyrics first. So there are um, some songwriters who spend 10 minutes every morning just writing in their book. And it's, a, it's an exercise in writing, um, free writing as they call it, is really, um, it's like a, a skill that you have to develop. You have to, um, you have to write about anything at all that comes into your head. And I've done this. I don't, I, I don't do it on a regular basis, but when I have done it, you sometimes find, oh, there's, there's actually a, a little, um, little something that comes, you know, a, a little thought, a little, uh, little thing that, that uh, piques your interest. I've got a, um, a, a, a file in my texts, uh, on my notes here that, um, it's called songwriting. And I've got all of these, these are all little things that I've scribbled, scribbled on my phone of, of song thoughts. And every now and then I just go back to this and find something and say, oh, you know, this, this might be something that's neat. Or, or in this book that I, that I showed, you know, something that I started that I never completed. But some, uh, some writers will just, can, they'll just spend time writing and, or they're poets and they start with the writing and then they will, they will, put the music to that. Or, you know, in, in sometimes there's a songwriting team like um, Elton John and Bernie Taupin. Bernie Taupin wrote all the lyrics. Elton John then started adding music to it. Some people do that as a team, other people just do it as themselves. I tend to be um, more of a music first person, like this song um, where I, I have something and, um, and I'm really proud of when I don't do it that way. And we'll, we'll come up with one of those songs where I actually do write the words first because it's really fun. And then what that does is it gives you this whole, whole variety of how do I want now to address that? How do I want to treat these lyrics in what, what form, what fashion, what type of music? How, how is it going to be? So um, for me, though, it's usually writing the um, uh, writing words first or writing uh, music first and then you get a feel for okay so how does this sound what's what's the sometimes it it, it just takes on a mood and um, there's something about it that just makes you uh, feel a certain way and so you can start writing about that um, uh, let's see a lot of times um, 
Well, sometimes you just need to get over that hump, that, that idea. Um, there's a, um, a songwriter named Susan Catania who lives locally here. She used to teach at Berkeley. And in fact, she'll be at our songwriting uh, show, song creating show at Folks Theater on February 10th or 11th. Um, go to artswayland.com for that. But she's, a, she, she's a, a, a terrific songwriter and teacher. And um, she um, goes to the Benjamin Moore paint um, uh, paint swatches and pulls out all these paint swatches and you know the paint you know the names it's like it's like fingernail polish you know they come up with uh, you know uh, woven tapestry you know or you know some kind of word and something and 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 the challenge she does with the class is now write a song about that that's your focus so sometimes people will write from a title and um, I'll get to that with one song too um, that. Um, just a word or a title and you, and you write from that. And so you need a, you need a spark and you need something to get you started. Um, I like to do with the music, I like that, but, but then you kind of figure out something and everybody knows, oh, not everybody, you may know the story about yesterday and what happened with that, uh, how that started. It was uh, Paul McCartney had that and, and he called it scrambled eggs because scrambled eggs had this, had this syllabic pattern that fit his song. Da da da! Yesterday, scrambled eggs. He, he eventually made it yesterday. So that, that's a that's a great story, and, and it um, um, it it's it's not uncommon that you just start start writing things just to get a feel for how how is this how is this coming rolling off my tongue as I'm singing this to myself. Um, so um, lyrics, though, are are really. Uh, integral part of the song because um, what they what they do is they I mean they're they're um, they just tell you what the song is about you know the the music music is like uh, is like a supporting supporting cast in a way when you've got the lyrics that's the actor that's really really um, is really the star of the song um, so there's um, there's when you're writing lyrics, you tend to think, uh, there's a lot to think about and, mm -hmm. and a lot of revision going on. And um, so I can, I can go on with this one. Um, no, let's, let's go on. I'm gonna talk about four songs primarily. We'll jump off of this one. Um, and um, so we don't go too long here. Um, but lyrics are, lyrics are funny and, and they, they um, well, they are funny. They can be funny. They can be sad. But they can be everything. What they need to also be is is interesting. They've got to um, uh, they've got to go together well. They have to say what you want to say. And what I find sometimes, I will sit. There, I, I know there's a word. I know there's a way to express this feeling that I'm inserting into this song, and I want to. I want to feel it back. And you know it's, it's a wistfulness. So let's let's say I'm, I want some wistful feeling. I'm trying to get it back. So you really do search. You write down a lot of different things, um, looking for that. They they need to make some sense. Not always. Everybody know the song "I Am a Walrus" by the Beatles. Okay, silly. You know, um, I am he is you or he is you or me and we are all together. Which actually I think is a brilliant word, which does make sense. Um, but see, anyway, we don't need to go into. John Lennon's lyrics, but he, he wrote that song specifically to not make sense and see if the Beatles actually could write a very popular song that made absolutely no sense. It was like a joke song. And, uh, and of course, you know, it did become a, a, a famous song. Um, there's also, I find some of these can be kind of trite and cheesy and actually in some very famous songs. And um, I, I try to avoid this, but, um, Here's here's a lyric. Um, when the sun refuses to shine, I will still be loving you. I mean, yeah, Led Zeppelin, very famous song. I don't know where I'm going, but I know where I've been. I mean, I think I could have written that in eighth grade. I was troubadour. That was a very famous song uh, in a metal, from a metal band, but it was for metalheads. Very very famous song uh, by White Saint. I think the band was. So. Um, there's also um, alliteration in, in lyric writing. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash, A.B.N. Young, 
helplessly hoping. Everybody remember that song? Helplessly hoping her harlequin hovers nearby. Well, what the hell is a harlequin hovering? Um, wordlessly watching, he waits by the window and wonders. You know, so there's there's a pattern that catches people. So alliteration is, a, is just another tool that people will use, writers will use to, for whatever reason, it either sounds good or it gives them a guideline if he wants to do that, I've got to come up. I've got to come up with all these H words. So now let's just come up with something. And it doesn't always make perfect sense, but it sounds good. And that's that's the thing that's really important is ultimately how it sounds. So the message should be there, but you really need to make something that sounds right. Um, so a lot of times words can go together. Um, I write a lot of songs that don't really go anywhere but they just are, um, they just sound right together. The words sound right. I mean, they make, it's just a love song. It makes, makes no real sense, except that it's just um, a love song. Um, let's see. So if I'm talking too fast, tell me to slow down. I'm trying to capture a lot. Yes, sir. Quick question. Early on, you mentioned the phrase, the hook. Or yes. The hook. Can, yep. you, can you talk about a hook and what you mean by that? Um, uh, no, because <laughs> it's really hard to put that, uh, put that into words, but I can tell you one person who writes a really good hook is Cheryl Crow. And I think, um, I think the last time I'll talk about tonight, listen, I think may have one because what I did is, is I changed, uh, when I went to the bridge, I changed, it almost was a key change. It wasn't really, but it felt that way. And, um, and uh, hooks are usually musical. I don't think lyrics will make a hook. It's the way it's the way the song goes. So if a song is in G, um, you may go to B flat. You know, you might try something different, and it just it just it's just something that catches you. Grateful Dead was also great at hooks. Um, you decipher Grateful Dead music. It's it's fascinating music. Um, so um, it's the best I can do. You kind of know when you hear it. That's the thing. That, that's really, I think, I think that's ultimately it. Um, all right. So we talked about um, the syllable, uh, syllabic pattern. Um, there's also the rhyme scheme and how you want some uh, words to rhyme. So this one I've got, you know, rhymes on the, the second and the fourth line rhyme and the sixth line. Um, but the seventh line here doesn't rhyme with anything, but it doesn't have to. Um, and um, well, it actually does. It rhymes down here. So this song goes, I have a blank sheet of paper, it's whiteness glows, a painter's empty canvas, a field of new snow, putting pen to paper, the ink doesn't flow. What is it that I really feel? Can I choose the right words to reveal it in a song? So that's that's how that goes. So there's a, there's a pattern to that. Um, and you don't always have to rhyme. Also. And rhyming doesn't always have to be perfect rhymes either. They can be, um, you know, there's, there's a website called rhymezone.com. I go to it all the time. And you've got, you type in a word, type in paper, um, and it'll come up with all these rhymes to paper. And then you click on near rhymes, because I didn't find anything in rhymes that really worked for me. So near rhymes. So now you've got, um, you know, you've got rhymes, something that sounds like paper, but isn't quite paper. So rhymezone.com, if you're, if you're a, Aspiring songwriter or poet is, uh, or lyricist is uh, a, a great website. So let's let's talk about um, some songs and how they how they developed without uh, going through the entire song. Um, and uh, I just picked four out of my uh, collection here that I was reasonably familiar with. Um, so. Anybody a guitar player here? Okay, then I'll bring it. Um, I, um, I started playing this and, whoop, wrong song. Uh, I, I brought, I've written two songs very similar to this. So I was walking my dog with my wife at her part, her farm, and this song was in my in my head. 
and it was late November, I think, you know, it's really rustic. Anybody know herd farm, you know, it's all dry grass and, and the, the sun was low and it was one of those gray days and it was really pretty out there uh, in, a, in, a, in a northern New England day on, in December. And um, I, uh, we had also just seen um, uh, the WGBH, who's the Irish, um, the Gaelic, or the Celt Celtic Christmas, Brian O'Donovan's Celtic Christmas. And I was really feeling, we'd been to Ireland recently and I was really feeling this, this whole um, no, um, you know, Northern Ireland uh, kind of feel to it and, and how you, know, you, you, you um, uh, tend to spend more time inside, you, you, uh, you know, get all nice and cozy in your, in your place, you've got the fire going, you've got you know, the sun only is you know, dripping, dripping down and um, so this this um, uh, this this song had that kind of acousticy uh, feel to it to me, and I um, it it uh, ended up developing into um, oh can you go to Yule Tide after mm -hmm. thank you so um, yeah just, um <laughs> The, the rains of late November have given way to snow. The covers fields where now I think I got to be Irish here. Barley grows. Okay, when I'm when I grow wheat or anything. Um, the sun. The, let's see. You got those up? Okay. So my my chords are here too. But disregard those. Can you scroll up? Um, you have bar up. Oh, come down. The sun recalls. The sun recalls a fading fire as it settles low. So now we're starting to get a little more um, flat, flowery with their, as, uh, on the southwestern horizon. So there's, we've got snow grow low. We don't need another low, another O rhyme here. So on the southwestern horizon. So just let that go. And, um, and then I started getting, I was thinking, okay, so this is kind of liking where this is going. I, I, I really love um, Christmas time, um, and I love um, I love my wife, and I wanted to write a romantic song. So um, this kind of became that, and what I wanted to picture was the two of us in front of a fire um, on Christmas Eve. You know, the dark dark night. So uh, your soft hand holds mine in my heart. The whiff of spices from the mud balsam on the hearth. Okay, so we're really getting flowery here and we're really romantic and maybe overly sappy. But um, uh, candles of cranberry colors and scented pine, and then uh, light the room. Let's see. Uh, light the room. Uh, light the room as dust dissolves the day. And, so, and then I. I I wanted to go to another chord. This may be the hook. I'm not sure. You never know. They and I could I could go to as a cold as a cold winter blues come to stay. So I could repeat that same chord, but instead I went to this as a cold winter blues come to stay. And I love the difference between that A7 to a G to instead of a. It's a beautiful chord. So that that's all part of this whole thing where, and I'm it happened a lot, it took a lot more time than what, <laughs> what I'm talking about here. Um, and then um, hearts warm by firelight. Um, we await the nights uh, reflect. I've changed the lyrics here so many times. I thought it'd be fun to you know reference like the northern lights. Uh, and uh, so um so what about this song then? So what, what happened with this song was that I started with a lick and I started with a feeling that I wanted to have and I started with an emotion that I wanted to have. And, and I just started picturing it. And, and um, that, that's, that's a lot of it. You, you just sit there and you, you, let it, you let it develop, you let it, you let it fester in your head. So where's it going? And you know, the songs, songs sit in my head and my wife's going, what are you thinking? Are you thinking? <laughs> I'm not listening to her, why? Because I kind of have some song in my head that I'm working on. Um, 
So um, this ended up becoming, um, let's see, um, a log night gives us time to ponder where we've been through this year coming to end on Christmas Eve with my best friend. Um, and um, so, you know, I throw a little hint of, um, of uh, romance in there. You know, love's embers uncontrolled. I got um, <laughs> celebrate the long night's dark and with the Yuletide afterglow. Um, let's see. Oh, so you actually see my Northern Lights note there is it's like a little, I insert that in to remind me that I actually was thinking of Northern Lights, but I changed it to Festive Lights. Anyway, so that's sort of the process here on this one. Um, and uh, this will be in my next album. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's that's kind of it. So it was um, um, this one was a music first song, and um, uh, the feel of it, and then it was also you know what, what inspired it was just the, my environment that I'm in. You know, they say write about what you know, write about what you're feeling, and um, at that time, um, you know, it was that time of year, and we were just all of, all those elements uh, came into place. Yes. I'm sort of interested in the process that you're developing. Do you work on only one song at a time or no. do you do multiple songs? Well, right now I'm not working on and because I'm in a, a maybe one, I'm in kind of a low. But no, um, there's there are a lot of unfinished songs that I may go back to. So you work on one, but I tend to be, I tend to be uh, kind of goal driven. So I do I do mostly work on one, but not always. When you work on one, take this one. How what's the time frame that you spend on say this song? Is it two it days? Can, it could be different. Oh no. Two weeks or a month? Yeah, two weeks or a month. But you know, it's just like it's it's in dribs and drabs. You know, it's not like I, it's not an eight hour a day job for me. <laughs> it's a you know, it's it's work on it at, at when I want to. I'm just doing this for fun. It's not a job. So um uh it, I mean, there are songwriters who do this professionally, as you, you might know. You know, they go to Nashville, get in a room. They're always co-writing in Nashville. They get in a room, there are four people, and they say, all right, what are we coming up with? And they come up with a song and maybe maybe two or three in, in the morning that they're working together. You know, they're very focused and very goal-driven. And I am, I am goal-driven. I, when I start a song, I tend to want to write it to the end. So I've got all that. But but then it, then it still evolves and, and, and uh, gets... Um, uh, gets revised. Uh, so anyway, to answer your question, no. In fact, you could probably say I've got I've got a hundred songs in the process because all of the ones I've written still are still may evolve. I'm um, going to ask you, you find a spot where you say, "Okay, I'm done." Yeah, there is a point. You just get sick of singing it to yourself. <laughs> sick of it. Um, and then you know, then you might come back to it. I mean, actually, this one I wrote three years ago, and I'm still working on it now because I, I, I just revised the lyrics. I started recording it and, and realizing what, what uh, I wanted to add to it in the recording. And so, so I'm, I'm back to it, but I wrote this one um, originally a few years ago. Um, okay, can you go to Error of My Ways? So totally different song, okay? And diff different experience. Oh. <laughs> um, this song is called Error of My Ways. I don't know if you um, have that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, it's not called that. It's called You're So <laughs> Wrong, Wrong for, for Me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't figured out the name of the song yet. Um, so. I'm going to make it bigger. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Um, so Kim and I are driving back from our daughter's college, and I had, I think I had watched the show Nashville. To be honest, I don't think I came up with the first line. I think it was in, I, I had heard it. And I thought, oh, this is great. So you're the trouble that I, I shouldn't get into. You're the mistake that I'd better not make. And I, I heard that. And um, I was actually at a songwriting retreat. And they said, put, a, put your ideas on the wall. It's all share ideas. And I put those two lines up. And then an hour later, I walk by and I took them down. I said, I'm keeping that. <laughs> so we're driving back. I said, Kim, pull out your phone. I've got to start writing this stuff down. <laughs> you remember this? <laughs> And we had more fun doing this. So um, I don't know if you can read all this. Um, you're the trouble I shouldn't get into. You're the mistake that I better not make. You're the bad influence. The, you're the bad influence I shouldn't drift to. 
you're the exit ramp I shouldn't take. So let's talk about metaphors, which I didn't bring up. Metaphors are huge in songwriting. And this one is, is metaphor out of control. Um, it's, all, it's obvious metaphor. Metaphors can be really, yeah, I, I think if we went back to Yuletide and say do that, though, I could probably pull out a metaphor there, but we'll pull it out of something else too. This is an obvious metaphor song and it was a more fun to write. Um, you're the oak tree I shouldn't climb on. You're the river that I shouldn't cross. You're the new food I shouldn't dine on. Every moment with you comes at a cost. And then uh, we'll, we'll get to that next part later. Um, so I kept writing these down. You're the wrong road that I shouldn't travel. You're the dark path that I shouldn't take. You're the mystery I shouldn't unravel. You're the brownies that I shouldn't bake. I mean, I just, I love them. We had more fun doing this. So then I brought this home and there's more to it. And um, I said, all right, how, what's this song going to be? How is this song going to come out? Is it going to be a, um, you know, like a, um, a um, like a classic folky song? I don't know, we'll work something. You're the roadmap, you're the wrong direction. You're the wolf dressed up like a sheep. Or is it going to be a, um, you know, a, a, a jazzy tune? What's it going to be? And um, I tried a bunch of different things. And you're the, let's see, you're the wildfire I don't want to extinguish. You're the rough seas I don't want to sail. Fa la la la, this is so boring. For the sun. So it just it just didn't fit right for me. So then I thought I really love the blues, so let's have a little fun. Here. You're the you're the Wi-Fi I don't want to extinguish. You're the rusty that I want to sail. Like, oh, that sounds kind of neat. Maybe that's where I'm gonna go. But then I got thinking, well, I think there's something better here. So I, I started. So now I'm starting on the on the what we call the four. I'm starting on a, on the not the main chord. This this would be E blues. I'm starting out in A. Sometimes I find it hard to distinguish whether you're my heaven or hell. So then I got it. I said, this is this is this is what I want to hear. This is what sounds right for me. And it's fun to play. And I got, oh, okay. So now I've got all these verses. I've got to put something else in here. And um, so that's when I um, I said, what am I trying to, what, what is it about this song? I mean, I mean, I can't just keep insulting this one. <laughs> you know, there's gotta be, there's, we've gotta come, we've gotta come back around. Because, you know, ultimately, why would I be singing to her if I didn't, you know, <laughs> didn't want to see her? So. But I love you. I can't get enough of you. You're the error of my ways, you're so wrong for me. You're the match that lights my blaze. Come set some fires with me. Then I had it, and that was it. Blues tunes rarely have bridges. Straightforward blues tunes. In fact, if you listen to classic blues, they only write three quarters of the lyrics everyone else writes because their second verse is the same lyric as the first. The, the second line is the same line as the first line. If you listen to it, what's, what's a good blues, uh, blues song? Uh, um, no. Uh, uh, let's come up with it. Hey, baby, what you doing tonight? Hey, baby, what you doing tonight? Right? Sound familiar? That's what they always do. It's kind of a joke with the rest of us. That, that, that blues, uh, blues tends to, um, first line is, you always know what the second line is because it's the same as the first line. Um, but I wanted to avoid that. So um, if you go to my uh, website, which you saw, steverob.com, there's a link to a video I did with this song. 
and it's, it's actually a lot of fun. It's, it's really pretty silly. Um, so that's a song that uh, started uh, with the lyrics and uh, then developed onto that. There are some other songs that uh, I've, I started with lyrics that were a little bit more floral, a little more, you know, romantic or, or um, pleasant. Um, I can't think of one offhand now. Actually, I do. Uh, happiness comes in waves, right? Um, uh, we won't get into that one too much, but happiness comes in waves. I saw it on a pillow on a beach town in Florida. I said, oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> and then I got, as I, I said, that's gonna be, a, that's gonna be the title of the song. And um, then as I started writing it, I said, well, well, what kind of waves, what kind of waves are they talking about? My first instinct was, oh, it's waves, you know, washing on the beach, the sound of waves on. Well, what about waves? This makes people happy. And what about beautiful flowing hair? That makes some people happy. And um, so the song ended up becoming uh, around that. And um, um, that just started, you know, it's easy when you're in Florida. The tide is rising, the sun descends below the edge of the sea. That's the way the song starts out. Music is a salve, all wounds it mends. The, um, the surface calling me. Um, so that became happiness comes away. So mostly that was, that was written before the music came, I think. Maybe a little bit of uh, at the same time, which is actually, I should say, is actually very common. So people will sit down and do both things at the same time. Um, let's go to Stranded. Now Stranded um, is a, is a, does it have um, another name? Pardon me? Does it have another name? I'm sorry, Oh, stranded. I see it. Sorry. Oh, oh. there we go. Stranded. Okay. <laughs> I have to find the uh, this is a, this is a ukulele tune. Um, what you may notice is that um, I um, if you if you listen to enough of my songs, you'll you'll realize that this guy really does not focus on one thing. Um, <laughs> so this is um, this is kind of a beach tune. Where is that? Let's see if I can remember. So I was listening to a fresh air interview with um, a, a music producer who lived in Jamaica, and I think he produced uh, Jimmy Cliff and some of those uh, Jamaican. The you know start of reggae, and somehow the word stranded came up, and I don't remember what the context was, except that I thought that's a word I don't hear very much, and I am writing a lot of lot of um, tunes about the ocean. Um, in fact, my second CD, which is over there, um, is is um, all I, I call it island vibe music uh, that we wrote. It's actually re recorded it on Dudley Pond last summer. At a concert we gave there, and then there's three other songs that are uh, done in the studio with that. Strandage, one of them. Um, but um, you know, with all the blues and all the folky stuff, I, I just love writing up upbeat, happy, uh, beachy tunes. Um, that's not the song. There we are. I may get the chords wrong here because I don't play this one. So I had this, the, word, the word stranded in my head and I want to figure out something. So this starts like a lot of, a lot of my beach tunes, set the stage, which a lot of songs are actually, set the stage, tell us where you are, tell the listener where you are, tell, tell the listener you know, what, what might be happening or what's around you. Um, you know, it's, it's five o'clock on a Saturday, the regular crowd rushes in. You know, you already know where you are. You're, you know, uh, and, and talking about piano man, right? Um, uh, so this, um, I think, I, I'm not sure what the the uh, iterations of this were, but it became um, nothing out there on the sea. Oh, let's see, what could be, what rhymes with C? And I may have gone to rhyme zone, I don't know, I saw the debris. Just endless waves and some debris. What's going on in this song? Sometimes a song writes itself. 
Black and ragged, gasping on the sand, thanking the stars for this island. Now I'm stranded here with you. All right, this line here, there's only so much that we can do. I actually, this is on the CD, it's already done, it's there. I woke up a week ago, in the middle of the night going, what a stupid line. <laughs> I could have done so much better than that. And I think that was a that was my scrambled eggs line. You know, I filled it in and I never got I never changed it. And then I, you know, I got it got it just became a part of the song. And I said, you know, so I've changed it now. Stranded here with you, surrounded by the ocean blue. I mean, what a nicer line than it's only so much that we can do. So what's fun about this song, what what, what makes me chuckle about this song, let's let's go down. Um, Let's see. Um, so we come to the, the sun beats down mercifully, but we have the shade of a palm tree. There's coconuts galore, but no rum. <laughs> this island life is not so fun. Now I'm stranded here with you. What are two castaways in love to do? Cast now we're in love. All right. So now, now, you know, it's not me and some, you know, somebody else on the shipwreck, me and my lover. I said, okay, I mean, what are two castaways in love to do? You've got palm trees, you've got coconuts, you've got a beautiful beach, you've got the ocean. What are you going to do? But screw tonight. <laughs> so that gets a lot of trouble. But I had to put it in because it's so perfect. So, so, but scrutinize the situation. Make the most of where we are. So, and I'm starting to think, Okay, hey, all of a sudden, and I think this next line, sometimes it just kind of come. We have no guns on our island nation. We make love in that war. Oh, no. So now we're on this island. We've got our own little island nation. We have no guns. So then we, now we've got a little, little whistle interlude here. Uh, and then we're back to the verse. Oh, look, is that a plane? Well, do we really want to see this plane? So you, you, Put yourself into this place. You know, close your eyes. Put myself into this place. I am, you know, with 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 this beautiful lover on this beach. Do we really want to leave? What are we going to do with that plane? We're going to be like Gilligan's Island. You know, you know, light a fire and everything. Maybe we just want to stay put. And um, so that's what that's what um, that's where this came. So that. Uh, look, uh, hooray, it's waving its wings, but that means we're going home. Let's hide and hope it keeps on going. You'll notice there isn't a single rhyme in that. Okay, because it doesn't need to be. Um, I'm stranded here with you, or have we already been rescued? Well, you can read this for yourself. Uh, from the world's unsettled mess, let's remain on this island nest. Now I'm stranded here with you. What are two castaways in love to do? And then on the song, I go, do, do. <laughs> Let anybody else, you know, think what they want with those last two syllables, um, maybe. So this song started from a title um, or a word. And uh, one, another exercise that songwriters will do, and they'll, they'll teach in courses, is um, you write down, you take five minutes and write down all these titles. And, um, you know, it might be, um, uh, you know, um, big black chair. I'm just looking around. Uh, you know, big comfy couch. Um, uh, you know, books on tape. Whatever. You know, you just write all these things out and you, and you pick one of those. And you go, okay, so maybe there's something or, the, you know, you, the more you write, the more you end up with, with fuel for your fire. The more you think about these things. And titles is just one more tool that people do. To um, to try to to try to start something, and um, uh, you know that's if you if you haven't gotten experience, it, you know it's just it's just one more one more way to do it. So let's see. We've talked about three songs here. Um, we've got time for one more, which is good because I have one more, and then uh, then we can you know see where we go from here. Um, so what's that last song? So close, right? Uh, so close, or you're so wrong for me. No, we already did your so okay. wrong. Okay. Yeah, go so, to so close. close. All right. So um, I started this one last 
winter down in Florida. And um, again, I wanted to write a, 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 uh, a nautical song. I didn't really want to write a happy beach song. Um, and I, I actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't really say that. I think that's, that's wrong. I, I probably started playing this and I said, well, that would make a nice, well, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 steps from the water in Florida. I, everything's a, everything's a kind of, a, you know, that's what you, that's what you think about down there. And, um, so, um, so close. Let's be in here um, so there it is. Yeah. Um, that's right. Um, this is a classic, you know, Bob Dylan wrote 50 songs with this chord pattern. Just sitting here with this, sitting here, and this is what you do. You play it. She's in the other room going <laughs> again. Um, and again, then you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking music, or I'm thinking of, of the ocean and everything. So the waves grow restless as we approach the coast. And the journeys in. What kind of journey is it going to be now? Is it just a, did I just sail across the bay or did I sail across the ocean? What, what time, where am I here? And what um, what century am I in? Am I am I on a whaling ship? What what am I on? And and I'm I'm probably thinking uh, at the time, I wasn't really sure, um, but I was just gonna kind of let this go and see where it went. Um, and um, we're on the, on the Gulf Coast, so we see sunsets all the time. Uh, they're just epic. And um, so I thought of that. How many sunsets could I love the most as the light breezes have? So again, you write about what you know, things that are really, you know, experience. Um, I get thinking, okay, so now, now he's back. And now, okay, so, so he or she, um, he's, this, is, this has been an epic journey. Okay, across the ocean. How many how many sunsets could I love the most? Um, sometimes you have to, if you put words in and you like them, now you have to react to it. So I could have put something else in there going, um, uh, I don't even have to talk, may not even have brought up sunsets. How many, how many women could I have loved the most? That's gonna change the arc of this song in the course of that whole uh, sailing adventure. But um, I didn't even think about that. Um, so, your lips touch softly upon my cheek to feel a tear falls from your eye. The winds are shifting and I'm thinking, he's home now, but boy, I love this last line or this, this line, but I'm a sing the seafarer's goodbye. I mean, when I said that to myself, seafarer, that's a great word. I mean, that, that conjures up. First off, it puts us in a different century. And, and now it's, it's really, um, it's really setting the stage for what's coming here and what and what the song is about. And and I have to say, I really didn't know where the song was going. Um, but I, I I don't know how how this happened, but it did. And um, I think I probably started like all, like all the sailors who sail the seas. Well, you can't you can't use that. You know that's that's boring. So let's let's. Let's like all the like all the the, the first mates who sail the seas. No, nah, that's not going to work. Like all the dreamers who sail the seas. It it really started developing from there, and I started um, getting a sense that this this is this song is going to take on a new dimension, and and let's just let it do that. And um, and all the lovers on bended knee uh, for the wish you want granted most. You've come so far. You are so close. Um, so now it's, it's, it started out. And I think if someone were to break this, like if I were to submit this, um, you know, to my teacher, she might, she might say, what well, you, you, your context is all wrong. I don't care. <laughs> it, it's, 
you know, they may say, well, you went from here to here. I said, it doesn't matter. It's just brought me in. And I think that's, I think that's really important too in, in terms of songwriting. Someone's always gonna have something to say about yourself, about your lyric, about your chord choice, about something. And you just have to dismiss that. Um, you know, I, I shouldn't say that. You, it, it's, it's, it's often good advice. In fact, I just went through a process uh, with a song um, using metaphors about uh, a girlfriend. And it's really a lot of fun, but I, uh, I sent it to uh, a friend who forwarded it to a female friend of hers, and she thought it was really inappropriate. Um, and uh, so I, I altered it a lot. So it was really good to, to, uh, to get that advice. So sometimes you do need to get that. Um, it's a fun song. We might go into that. Um, but um, this song just went where I wanted it to go. And in the chords and the way I was, I felt I was strumming it is a very, um, um, how's it going? Like all the dreamers who sail the seas. And there's just this, this smooth, and it, it kind of made me think of, of um, God, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to equate it with something really, you know, masterful composition, but it just had, had this feel to it to me. Um, I've since recorded this with a guy named Jim Medvedev playing a grand piano. The grand piano we used to have in the W Gallery and, and Steve Laban's playing cello. And uh, I don't know if you know Steve Laban, he's a um, uh, professional cellist, plays all over the world. And um, it just, it gave it that gravitas that I, I wanted it to have. Um, and uh, so, uh, let's see, where are we? Can we bring this up? Um, so there's actually, there's a, because I've got two, two what we call reframes back to back here, there's actually an instrumental verse between these um, that, um, uh, in fact, that top part there is really the only time you hear a lyric in that chord pattern, that verse. So then we go to the reframe, like all the dreamers, the sail the seas, and then back to um, uh, the, uh, da -da -da. And I think what what I think is important about um, to mention in this one is the second line goes. The first line it went. So there's a difference between the two of those. And when you add this, when you add that that D to a C chord. It opens it up. It's a, it's a very, it, it really changes the sound of the chord versus this chord is an A minor seven. It's a different sound, very similar chord. All the notes are the same except one. So, so that's the difference in that, in that verse um, and the two lines here. So, or not, not here. So uh, to all the farmers with weathered hand, all the migrants on foreign lands, to all whose future relies on hope. You've come so far, you are so close. Now I'm thinking, okay, so this is really going out to, to people who are really searching for, for, for something. And here's where I think I might have a hook, all right? Um, uh, let's see, so let me just get that. You've come so far, you are so close. For all the painters who, and I think going to that B flat, for all the painters who know now when to lay the brushes down and the songwriter nearing the end searching for that final sound and now Jim uh, the keyboards goes to reach it and now I'm going to bring the song home and uh, can, we, can we bring that up? Uh, to reach an ending, one must begin. And I love the second line, to, to find salvation, one first must sin. So I think it really should be one must first. first one must sin, because that first must is a really tricky thing to say. But um, um, there's, I just, this is just what I wanted the song to say, is if you're, if you're gonna, if you're gonna reach for something, keep reaching, you may not get there. You're so close. Just, just keep going. Um, 
to every secret through the unknown you've come so far, you're listening so close to every dream. And then, so here's a, here's a tag now, okay? This, you gotta bring a song home. I mean, and we haven't really talked about endings on, on the songs, but it's, uh, in this case, it's really just uh, another repeat of that last line. I know sometimes when I hear a song and I go, okay, they've repeated that line again. It means it's finally over. And um, that's the case here. So uh, with every dream that you want the most, You've come so far, you are so close. And I stop right there and just look at the other court. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a farmer's boy. <laughs> you got a line in there about farmers. Yes. They work all the time. Of course they do. I mean. Did I, did I address that well? Well, my, I guess my problem with it is that. Can I you scroll up to the. I'm uh, right there. Yes. To all the farmers with weather at hand. I mean, they work so much. I don't know if they have time to think about the future. I mean, hmm. they're 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 on the land and it's really hard. It's hard. So when I saw that, that somehow the farmers don't fit with the rest of them. Hmm. Okay, thank you. It's all right. <laughs> but I really like that theory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who else has a weathered hand? Let's see. Oh, well, the well, weathered hand, yes. Yeah. There's got to be another. Mm, okay. Keep thinking about it. <laughs> no, thank you for that. This is good. And you know, I, I don't often submit my lyrics to other people um, who I know are going to be critical. And it's a good thing to do, and I should do that more. Although I don't know if I would have had a farmer in the circle I would have sent them to. We we do have songwriting get-togethers. Um, I just started another one on Zoom with um, some people. And the as long as you have, I've been to some of these where nobody wants to criticize. They're all, oh, it's a great song. You know, no, that's the wrong attitude. Tell us what's working and what's not so that we know, so we know where to go. Um, and uh, uh, so um, they're, they're, it's, it's, it really helps a lot to get together their opinion because, you know, a lot of people will just say, if you're not a co-writer, like me, I'm not, I'm just writing on my own. Um, you really get you get caught up in it. You get locked into it. You, you end up loving it. These are like these are like my children. You know, I mean, they really are. And and um, they, uh, you know, you, you. Well, it's it's a it's a mistake I make, and it's a mistake a lot of people make of not really letting letting them uh, be um, critiqued enough. So something to move, something to work on. Yes, that's but that's a really good point. You, I think you have to have someone you trust who gets the essence of your song yep. and can help you work through the lyrics. Yeah. You know, I think I've had I've I've I've, I've had uh, I've had good results with playing them for people around around here. Um, in that, well, not, nobody's ever really critical, <laughs> and and. Uh, and I think I, occasionally, I mean, they might be critical about other aspects of my performance, but um, uh, if they accept it and they and I know they like it, um, then that sometimes is is good enough. But uh, it is it is worth doing. Um, the girlfriend song, I guess I, I should probably bring it up because I mentioned it. It's really it's really kind of fun. Um, I don't know, Kim. Do you think it's too racy or not? It's not racy. It's just, it, it's just, um, it's it's a song um, that I started along. I, I, okay, so I woke up one morning. I came downstairs. I said to Kim, I woke up with this phrase, "girlfriend made of cement" in my head. Why? And this happens to me. That I I end up dreaming songs and waking up to these phrases. And I ended up writing. This is a lyrics first song. I have a girlfriend made of cement. Um, her, her, yeah, oh, believe me, that first, this first didn't stay. Okay. 
but um, her um, her stone her 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 strong foundations led to many arguments. <laughs> um, it, it it went on from there, and I thought, well, this could be really kind of fun as long as I'm making it I'm making it fun. So at the risk of um, well, then I added I added some really good class. I mean, some that's not really good, one. and that ended up going. But I love my girlfriend. She's made of fresh air. When I look, I can't always see her see her there but I can sense the freshness of her breeze as she weaves her way through the evergreens. I love my girlfriend, she's made of fresh air. My best girl is like my favorite blue jeans. She, she fits me perfectly and so comfortably. Her love may be fading, so I'm trying to put in all these, this is, this is another metaphor song, so I'm trying to add all these things. Her love may be fading, but I'll never upgrade because I know I'll find, never find another so tailor-made. My best girl is like my favorite blue jeans. So I'm sorry if this insults anybody, anybody on Zoom, I'm sorry. Um, I don't think it, it qualifies as, as objectifying uh, because that's really not what the definition of that is. But um, it, it went on like that. And, it's, and it was a lot of fun to write. So it kept coming up with other things. And, and um, so now I've, I've edited it down. I've probably got about half the verses that I wrote that are and, and smooth things out a little bit too. Well. But I should, I should run that by. More, more females too, just to make sure it's uh, it's it's okay. All right. Um, I I don't know. Let's see. I think I've I've gone through my four songs here, and I don't want to uh, make this uh, any longer than it needs to be. Um, um well, let me. Um, I, I'm going to run. I, I could just run by a couple of things here. As I'm as what what I, I may have indicated this already uh, indirectly. Um, a lot of times that opening line. Is, is what starts the song. And um, there's, there's not always a, a uh, that opening line doesn't always come consciously. It, don't, it, it doesn't come on purpose. It doesn't come like, in, in this one, I, uh, you know, I felt like I had that, I wanted to write that song about the ocean. But, um, you know, a lot of times they just sort of, uh, sort of come out. Um, and uh, so a couple of, um, I had this ready. Mm. Audrey, sir, and, and this came right out. Audrey slips away without a sound. Uh, leave, let's see. Leave, leave, oh, can't remember. Leaving her bed made. And her trophies on the shelf. I'm writing a song about a runaway, and I didn't even know it. And and then his mom and dad left lying in the dark. In their dreams, she was the one that gave him so much pride. I wrote this whole song about a suburban girl runaway, um, and it just it just it came from that first line. Now. It, developed slowly, actually it developed in a day. I was at Marco's one night and I played that for a couple of people who related to it. Um, I won't say who, um, but um, you know, these things happen. Um, um, when you get that first line, things can really go from there. Um, one time I was at the gym and a guy walked by me, a Caribbean gentleman had this waft of coconut. He must've put coconut in it. And I'm like, oh, it just drives me nuts in a good way. <laughs> when I smell coconut, it really drives me nuts. And it came a whole song about coconuts, about the beach. Um, and um, so, uh, anyway, these things just happen. Um, a lot of, um, I could go into metaphors. Anyway, that's that's probably that's enough. Uh, enough talk for me. Anybody else? Questions or thoughts or critique? I love your poetry. It. Pardon me? I love your poetry. Thank you. You're a poet. <laughs> I really thought I was, but I'll, I'll, I'll thank you. Thank you very much. It, uh, I, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a labor of love. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you about the um, 
the use of rhyme, the pattern of rhyme. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the rhyme, rhyme sets up a certain expectation for the listener. That's that's positive. Yes. Um, what, what, what do you mean by positive? Well, that you have a great line, and you're, 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 the listener is following it, and and the completion of that rhyme, whether it's a couplet or a b b a. I was watching. Well, you mean you, you mean it? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So, but, but but from everything you said, I get the sense that there's no rhyme or reason. It's but I'm, I'm your, your kind of your kind of method seems to be whatever works for the lyric, whatever completes the thought is good. Uh, and some I was well, watching some of yours has sort of couplets, you know, the classic A A B B. Yep. Other times you had A B A B. Yep. I, I've been listening to songs to try to figure out what rhyme pattern. They're all different. Are. That's called a rhyme scheme, yeah. and and they're very different. And I remember uh, at one uh, one uh, songwriting get together. I, I played something and um, um, they looked at me and goes, what's your rhyme scheme here? <laughs> and um, uh, I, I don't really know. It's kind of the first time I'd ever heard that term. <laughs> and it, it um, um, So I, how important is it? Oh, um, well, how important is it to rhyme? Yeah, or to the, the use of rhyme as a device in song. Yeah. How, well, how, how often do you rely on that? I think I think fairly often, um, but not always. So I think if you have if you have a line, so so a, a line may go 18, uh, 16 beats. Next line may go sixteen beats. If you're rhyming on that, let's say you're rhyming on that that uh, fourteen beat or whatever, you know, you've got a pattern, and if you if you if you play the the the, the additional lines to that same pattern, and you end on that same beat and it doesn't rhyme, it's probably, it might throw you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, if, you, if you end before that and let the song trail out, um, then it can, it can work a little bit better. I, I'm not really sure how to, how to say it, except you know it, you kind of, you can hear it. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, one song or another that might be. Um, better. Um, uh, let me. Let's just go back to that that um, song, and I'll just pull like one line out. Um, that go back to uh, so close. Um, like all the dreamers who sail the seas, and all the lovers on bended knee, for the wish you want granted most, you come so far. That just doesn't sound. You know, it doesn't sound. You've come so, f I don't know, this may not be a good example. Um, it's hard to, I'm, I'm not sure I can pull it out of a song here. But if you lose, if you lose, if you shorten the line, then it, it, then you can get away, you might be able to get away easier without a line because it's not happening at the same same. Time. So for example, in that, in that uh, verse, Let's say, let's say that C and me rhyme, sort of. It's, you're taking a little license. So you Was have there a, C, a, C's and me? Well, C, me, C's, me, oh. maybe not. Okay, so then you have A, B, C, D. Nothing rhymes in that verse, right? Uh, other, other I'm sorry, where are you talking about here? C's, me, most, close. Most and close are new rhymes. They're close, yeah. Close they're so you have A, B, C, C. Yep. Okay. No, I, I don't. I have A, A, B, B. I mean, I don't really go, I don't really think about it that way, but it, it, I mean, I've got, I've got two rhymes here and two rhymes here. Well, that's, I was first saying that C and me, I was saying that those rhyme, and then I thought you said they don't. No, 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 they do rhyme. No, every, these, yeah. these two rhyme, I'm saying they, they do rhyme, even though one ends in the nest. Right. Yeah. And, and most and close, generally it's, it's that vowel, sure. that strong vowel is what, yeah. what you're going to hear right. more than anything. So um, I'm not sure what your, um, May I add something? Yeah. Is that, that you're actually just touching something I really like about your songs a lot. Imagine for a minute the opposite. So it uses a firm rhymes, no near rhymes. And it was A A B B. When people, when songwriters make rhymes like that, the song inevitably develops a sing songy quality yeah. that can feel childish. Yes. Yeah. And in Steve's songs, he uses these near rhymes. I'm, I'm not sure it's taking a license in a negative sense, it's the other way around. Yeah. The song, has a, uh, I believe it's called assonance to it, like mm -hmm. a bow and flow, 
Mm -hmm. they, they rhyme because the, the vowel is the same, you know, but it never sounds sing songy. And it takes some of the potential sappiness out of the lyrics to avoid that AA. That's a, that's yeah, a great term. Well, he does it a lot. Maybe the guy yeah. that does I could, I could be guilty of that. I, 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 I wrote this one in. Because when it's, too, when it's too perfect, it does sound sing songy. Or, yes, yeah. and I'm guilty of that with this one. And, and I work with uh, anybody know Alice Paul. The, um, I work I work with him on songwriting, and he said, "This is you got to change this." I said, well, I'm trying to find a way to make you mine, and I want you to be happy all the time. I'd like for you to know you're always on my mind, and I love you till the end of time. And I've had to change that, um, mm -hmm. even though that's exactly what I want to say. Mm -hmm. I've got to now change it because it is too much of that. Um, so, and here's actually, um, here's, a, here's a song with, with no rhyme in the, uh, in the I don't think. Um, it goes, um, slow down, ease up, don't be in such a, oh, so there's a rhyme in the line, there's a line, in, a rhyme in that, in that line. Okay, so I could, I could divide these into eight ones instead of four. Um, right. Yeah, there are rhymes. Relax, free your mind. We still got lots of time. Be calm, take a pause. And if you wonder why, it's just because. So that just because is because I ended earlier and didn't didn't extend out that line to the same extent. And so I didn't have to rhyme. So relax, take a pause, and if you wonder why. There's the rhyme now. It's just because. Mm -hmm. So that rhyme. So the rhyme scheme has changed somewhat, or it's it's just it's a very rhyme scheme. So, you know, you kind of know when you hear it without really, you know, put math to it and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm kind of more organic than I am uh, with this than than actually technical. Yes, sir. You seem to be obviously very introspective as you're developing the song, and as you get to the end and you say I'm done, then I'm. <clears throat> You may or may not record it. Right. But I have this feeling that somewhere along the way you say, Oh, wait a minute, I could change this line and really make it much better. Oh yeah. If you've recorded it, can you do that or well, are you stuck? Oh yeah, you can. Even if even if something's released on on the air and on Spotify and on a CD, you can still change it. Yeah. I uh, not just me, I've talked to professionals who who will say that too. Um, you know, it's it's uh, we all live in a regret. Um, but um, no, it's an organic thing. It's it's uh, it's intangible and it's organic. It's just gonna gonna change as you want it to change. I mean, if you if you listen, you know, we're talking about lyrics. You listen to a song's performance, and um, you know, go see James Taylor rock out one of his old folky tunes. You know, because he said, I'm I'm ready to play this a new way. You know, and he and he does, or anybody else that does that. You know, there's so many different ways to 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 play another a different a song a different way um and that was that didn't come out right there's so many different ways to play a song and even by the same performer um so if you can change up the way you're playing the song why can't you change the lyric you know there's no rule there's no lock-in you know even though it's printed so anyway that's my feeling i'm sticking to it somebody else may feel different yeah, so all the poets whether it can Mm. Poetry, well, <laughs> no. That's better than farmers. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, but I've got this recording. <laughs> okay, you keep, you You know how to get a hold of me. You, uh, you let me know. You should tell my farmer's daughters. <laughs> oh, no. not touching that one. Uh, but I'm both. All right, uh, thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next, uh, the next speaker here is in uh, what a few weeks? Uh, yes, February seventh. And he is actually a neurosurgeon, so <laughs> you know, I'm just takes all I'm types. Just, I'm just a little old songwriter. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. That's great. Thank you.